Hey, I'm Jamie from Stonemeyer Games, and today I'm going to talk about how to teach Stamp Swap. Stamp Swap is our newest games from designer Paul Solomon and artist illustrator Connor Gillette. And this is a one to five player game about collecting stamps, drafting stamp tiles, cutting and choosing the stamp tiles, among other things, so that other players can choose one of the two piles that you created and you get to keep the other one. And uh, then organizing those stamps in your uh, in, in your stamp book so that you can score the most points. Um, this is a video about how to teach the game, not how to play the game. There are other rules videos, including one from Watch It Played about the full rules of the game. Uh, I've taught this game a few times recently, so I have, I have a pretty good grasp on how to teach the game. And really the first thing to start out with is to set up the game because I think it makes, the, it, it makes everything much more easy to understand when you see everything on the table. Uh, so the setup involves, I won't go into the full setup, but it basically involves revealing some event cards and putting uh, all the things shown on those event cards on the table. It's mostly a bunch of tiles from this insert, tiles of different sizes that are face up and face down on the table, along with some cards, including specialist cards like this. After that, you'll give each player a player mat, and this is where you can start teach the game a little bit, um, phase by phase. It's really just, it's a three round game, and so you can essentially teach as you play. And the board helps you do that because the board walks you through what each of these days looks like. So basically I tell players, okay, in a, any given round, we are going to draft uh, things. I'm saying things because they're cards and tiles from this public display that I've created or from this pool of items. So we're going to draft things, taking them one at a time until we have six of them. And that's when I point to the player mat and show oh, there are six different slots down here. doesn't matter where you put things in these slots. It's just a reminder that you're drafting six things, one thing at a time. Uh, so we're going to collect things. And then simultaneously, we're going to divide those things into two different groups. And while we're doing that, we get to reserve one of them. And I like to tell players this early on, that even though they're drafting things and they're cutting them so that another player can choose some of those things that they've drafted, that they get to hold on to one of those things. They can't keep a rare stamp. I show players what rare stamps are, but it kind of reassures you that these things that you're drafting, you get to keep one of them. No one else can take that thing away. Um, and then everything else simultaneously is being cut in, in, into two different piles. So if I draft a bunch of tiles, I'll put three of them in one pile, two of those tiles in another pile, and then I'll put one on my res reserve to hold on to it. Um, the next phase in the game is where we are cutting and choosing, or where we're choosing. Uh, we've already done the cutting. And while I'm teaching this, in fact, I, I should have mentioned this earlier on, each player has their own little reference guide. So at the very beginning of the game, I'm giving each of the player a little reference card so that they can go through these steps with me. So as I'm teaching them, they can look down, they can visually see how it's explained on the reference card. And if they need a reminder, they can look down at the card. They know it's there if they need to understand it later in the game. So we're doing the, uh, the swap phase of the game where players are choosing different tiles. And this is where, this is really where that maybe the biggest part of the teach comes in because players at this point don't really know what to choose. This also happens a little bit in the draft. They don't know what to choose. Um, so to help guide players, whether it's in the draft or it's in the choosing part of the game, I give them a few things to think about. One of those things are the goals in the game. At any given time on this board, there are goal, there's a color goal, a theme goal, a size goal, a canceled goal, and then an end of game finale goal. And so during setup, I will tell players, I will explain what these different goals mean to give them something to think about. But I'll just do kind of a quick overview until we actually get to times like the draft phase, the choose phase, where players need to actually make a choice. Where I'll go back, I'll revisit them and say, okay, so if you need help here, right now we're looking, you're looking for uh, potentially a big color. Um, or, or a certain color, you're looking for uh, a certain size. Maybe this says big stamps, big squares. So you're looking, maybe big squares are more valuable to you. And as I'm doing this, I need to emphasize that you only score three of these categories because it's only a three round game and you'll only score each category once. And so I might score for color, theme, and size, and I might not choose, I might not score for canceled stamps in this specific game. So I'll emphasize that, that, that it is okay if they don't understand one of the categories or if they just want to disregard it because they aren't gonna score all four categories anyway. The other thing I'll emphasize here is that each person's player mat has a different theme on it. For example, this player mat says vehicle stamps. So if they need something to guide them into what to choose, um, 
they, they can look at their player map. They gain extra points each round for every stamp of that theme that they have, as noted on their player map. Uh, so those are maybe the top two things that I'll do to help players guide them. There are other ways that we'll score. And so prep, prep, usually after the entire round one, I will talk more in detail at least about what we'll score at the end of the game, including forever stamps, the actual values on the stamps themselves, the specialist cards. These are ongoing abilities. They all give you two points at the end of the game. And then the scoring, the finale. So this is something for players to think about throughout the game, the finale goal in terms of, it's usually a spatial goal as to exactly where they're putting their stamps on the map. Um, so at the end of it, oh, and then we'll, after we do the, the choosing, so I'll talk about this during the drafting, the choosing, anytime the players need to make a decision early in the game and they need something to guide them, I'll talk about those different elements to help guide them. And then when they get to the show phase, this is where, and it kind of happens a little bit with the swap, but um, during the show phase is when you decide where to put the newly collected stamps that you earned on your, on your player mat. And so again, here I might emphasize, here are the things to think about during this phase. And then even though it's simultaneous, you'll score simultaneously, for the first round of the game, when I'm teaching a game, I will probably do scoring one by one, where I'll, I'll ask each player, okay, how, what do you want to score right now? Emphasizing again, that you only score three of these categories throughout the game, and you'll only score the categories you choose once. So what is, I'll, I'll help each player in that first round to guide them towards what might score the best in that round. After we get through that full round of, of, of all those different steps, then players usually have a pretty good grasp of how the game works. I might still at that point emphasize the end game scoring. I might explain these again uh, because sometimes it might uh, take a little bit, a little while to click as to how these are working. And I also might mention um, that as players start to score, that that might inform how you actually sort your piles because it's not just about what you want in terms of what how you sort the piles during the, the swap phase, but it's also about what other players have scored. And so I know if most other players have scored canceled stamps, they're not going to value canceled stamps as much and that might come into consideration as you get later in the game and start to think about that. Um, yeah, that is pretty much overall how I teach stamp swap. I talk all uh, a broad picture and then help players focus about what to what to choose when they're in the, the 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 drafting phase and the cutting phase and when they when it's time for them to choose. Um, and then I kind of re-emphasize the different scoring categories throughout the first round until they fully understand it. That is my teaching method for stamp swap. And fortunately, the, in addition to the reference cards, the back page of the rule book has a visual overview of each of these rounds and a written overview of them. And so I usually just kind of keep this handy in front of me as I'm teaching the game. Oh, there's one other thing I wanted to mention. Probably the most confusing concept of the game in the game is the concept of groups. So let's, uh, yeah, here's, here's an example here. Can't, so this category says you'll score canceled stamps, two points per separate group. So the category, the idea of a group in this game can be a little bit confusing. And so I might emphasize this in particular. A group in Stamp Swap is a set of connected stamps on your mat that also share a specific trait as mentioned on the goal card. So in this case, canceled stamps that are touching each other down here in a group, that would be one group of canceled stamps. And there might be another group up here of cancel stamps and other stamps among them, but it is still a, con as long as those connect, those canceled stamps are connected, that forms that group of, of, of canceled stamps. So you're looking for a, a specific shared trait and connection points among those stamps spatially on your mat. That is what defines a group in stamp swap. Takes a little bit to understand that concept um, because it's two different things that are coming together. Uh, it's not just the spatial element. Uh, and so I usually have to explain that a few times when I'm, when I'm teaching the game. Let me know if you have any questions below, whether it's about the rules or about the, just the teaching method in general. I'm happy to talk about it more in detail in the comments. Thanks.